we are no longer unbeaten in the Premier League. We did, however, beat Spurs. Hello everybody and welcome back, I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to Fix Formation with Southampton. So, like I said in the beginning of the video, 10 games into the Premier League season, we are no longer unbeaten, uh, having lost twice. We did win a, a big, big game against Spurs, so the first game off-camera was a 2-1 loss against uh, Wolves. Uh, Veli Wally and Pedro Neto scoring for them, Che Adams uh, pulled on back, but in the end it wasn't enough. He did play really get, really well. Uh, a similar story in the 2-1 loss against uh, Aston Villa at home. Danny Drinkwaters and uh, El Ghazi uh, giving uh, Aston Villa an early two-goal lead and Che Adams spilling one back again in uh, the 90th minute this time. But again, it wasn't enough to take the win, or at least the points. Then a big upset once again away at Spurs. We've beaten them 2-1, and this was a really fantastic game. Danny Ings finally starting a game and scoring after just 27 minutes, uh, followed up by Stuart Armstrong goal just over the one-hour mark. Sun Young Min did get one back near the 80th minute mark, but it wasn't enough for Spurs to uh, keep us from winning the game. As you can see, we did dominate it, same amount of uh, shots on target, we had more shots in total, more possession, uh, better average rating, we played really, really well uh, during this game. And I, I think Ings had a, quite a big responsibility in the win, because he did score a goal, but he also was really uh, present in the play, uh, giving some good passes and, and making some good runs. So that's why today, in the first game of today, against Watford in the Carabao Cup, he'll be starting again. Partially also to get some, some match sharpness. And I'm really, really looking forward to, to seeing him more. Um, as we do rotate a little bit, bringing in Vestergaard in centre-back, Walker Peters on the right wing-back, uh, Peter Gerkens in centre-defensive midfield. And I think that's about it. Because I do want to make a bit of a cup run. Because imagine if we can get into Europe uh, next season, it'll be a good boost to our reputation and, and help us attract better players. Uh, and one such player we, we need to upgrade is uh, Oriol Romeo, uh, the, the Carrero we use, and he has been by far the, the worst player of the team. Uh, and I am looking to probably replace him with um, Stuart Armstrong. I'm going to see what he does in the cup, but uh, if he underperforms again, uh, Armstrong will take his place But uh, in the next Premier League game. First up, Watford in the Carabao Cup. As we make it to the selection screens, uh, playing a 4 2 for a defensive formation, a 4, uh, four at the back, two defensive midfielders, one centre midfield, two wingers, and a striker. Uh, quite a lot of pace. Um, I don't know if Dilafeo is still that fast, but he's a good player. João Pedro, no goals as of yet, so he'll probably score against us. Isaac Success, he's uh, pretty fast. Cavaceri uh, is a good defender, as is Mariapa. So it's a, it's a decent team, but. Um, I'd still consider his favourites. As we get the match underway in the third or fourth round of the Carabao Cup. I can't really remember now. But like I said, a, a run in this would be really nice. Um, just to, to be able to rotate the squad a little bit. And to maybe get into Europe as the first highlight is here after 50 minutes. And it's Southampton on the ball with Romeo into Gerkens. Finds Bertrand on the wing. Looking to cut inside. He's going for it. He's going to shoot. He does and he scores. Ryan Burchant, it's 1-0. Another fantastic goal by a left back, and it's his first of the season. But uh, really surprising, it's a great start from us. Good football, Burchant, having all the space on that left wing, putting in sight and hitting it so well. A lot of power, a lot of accuracy, and the keeper was beaten every single day of the week. Uh, so it's a fantastic start to us. As we're on to the next highlight, it looks like it'll be a free kick for them. Maybe we can count from this. This is zipped in, finds it to the Kuri, and he scores. And it was very poor defending. Also, no offside. But uh, I do want to see that goal again. Because he found himself in so much space. With De La Feu with the free kick. Uh, João Pedro, just like, he's being covered by two men, and, and the Kuri isn't. So that's pretty poor defending and, and something I'll probably have to look into. Like this is something I'm not comfortable with, something I, I usually never do is create my own set pieces. I usually just, that's a weird highlight, just um, pick the standard ones. Maybe it's time once we, we optimize the formation to also have a look at, at set pieces. As we're into another highlight uh, with Watford 
stealing our ball and now trying to play it upfield, finding De La Feo out wide again. Bertrand can't stop it, he's uh, been run off the ball, so it's still De La Feo, still De La Feo, hits it and good makes the save. Uh, it's clearly Watford uh, picking up the pace a little bit after the, the early goal down. Uh, and now of course back on equal terms. As that corner is cleared only as far as Petro Diaz, who plays it back. And that's the end of the highlights, in true FM fashion. As we make it to halftime at 1-1, one, one, we are the better squad. Still, uh, not that much of possession, but it's something, uh, something of a trend with this, uh, with this formation. Redmond not really being present in the game. Danny Ings also be playing a bit poor. Romeo, not the, not the worst player on the pitch, but not really present. Uh, same goes for Pete. Uh, same goes for the rest of the teams. Uh, rest of the team were Harkins and, and Bertrands. I'm gonna keep it as is. Give it an about till the 60th minute and then make some changes. As very fast, we are into another highlight. One minute into the second half, it's Vestergaard into Romeo. Out by two Walker Peters. Again, those wing backs being so important. What can he do? Finds Ward Prowse this time. Plays it inside. Hits it. For the cross, but it's cleared uh, eventually falls to Bertrand. What can he do? Lose it to De La Feu. Um, for a second, and he's actually being sent off. I have no idea why, but De La Feu just got red carded. First time. Um, I'll take it. So it's definitely uh, ours to lose. As you have another throwing on the one hour mark. Finding Redmond out out to Bertrand. Can he whip it in for a cross or is he going to shoot again? Tries to find uh, Ings in the 16, but eventually falls to Walker Peters, who makes it 2 1. And that's not a fantastic goal. Again, set up by the fullbacks. As it's, it's time to make some changes. Danny Ings uh, probably still looking, uh, searching for his best form. So let's bring in Oba Femi. Um, we're going to keep Romeo on the pitch. Give him another chance to prove himself, but he's not going to be in the team next game if he continues to play like this. Um, as we'll also take off Redmond, really not his best game, as uh, apparently Armstrong is really good at playing Shadow Striker, so let's give him a chance. And we're at another highlight, this time for what for Dave Wippetin, and it is... Uh... <sighs> Damn it, it's 2-2, Adam Asinwa. Having all the space to hit it from just outside of the box, finding that bottom right, bottom right corner, and uh, leveling it up for Watford once again. Uh, really disappointing considering we're playing against 10 men. Um, but it's an insta highlight, hopefully for us, as I do want to win this game in normal time. I'm not really looking forward to playing extra time as we lose the ball to Quina. And it seems like we're just a bit too complacent against this man. Finds Sao Pedro, but eventually picked up by Gunn. Maybe we can still turn this highlight in our favor. It's a big throw into Walker Peters, who finds James Ward Prowse. Finding Armstrong has Walker Peters on the wing, gives it to the other wing with Bertrand, whips it into Oba Femi, and it's 3 2. And that's a fantastic, fantastic play. Once again, the wing backs. Finding that space, other players just dragging the defense out of position, giving uh, some space to the striker. And Obafemi with a great finish, his second goal of the season. 3 1 to, us, to Southampton. As we've just passed the 80th minute mark, uh, no highlights uh, since last goal, and it just looks like we'll finish the game as the best team. But still, this was against Tin Men. As we apparently have one last highlight, one minute away, uh, one minute left in extra time, head away, finds Peter Harkins, loses the ball very, very poorly, and ugh, damn it. Oh, it's been disallowed for offside. Still, it was very, very poor play, but uh, we got away there. We might just fret ourselves a little bit, scoring a 4 of 1, it's plugged by Bertrand, and I think that's gonna be that 20 seconds left. Uh, an extra time, and that's indeed it. We've beaten what for two three, and I think we're on to the quarter final of the Carabao Cup. Not the best game, um, but the boys did the job. Any big eliminations? Chelsea going through uh, as the United Reading on penalties, so uh, probably surprising for uh, Bournemouth going out. But uh, yeah, we left to find another day in the Carabao Cup.
as we are indeed through to the Carabao Cup quarterfinal, um, eight teams still in the hat, so four games to be played. Uh, still some big ones left in, in City and Chelsea, and I think like we saw, United is also still there, but also teams like Reading and Swansea, which are the ones we are of course hoping to be drawn against. Uh, let's see, Norwich is also still here, as is Everton. So uh, yeah, still some, some difficult matches to be played, but also some attainable ones. We are actually first out of the hat, and we will be playing our quarterfinal against Norwich. I'll take it. Would have preferred Reading or uh, or Swansea, but um, yeah, if, if it could have been worse. We'll also be playing at home, so that's a uh, that's a big upside. Where are Norwich in the Prem? They are fourteenth, seven points behind us. So it's not uh, not gonna be the easiest games, but we did just beat Watford, and they are kind of in a similar position as Norwich uh, this early in the season. So uh, we might just be able to get into a semi-final of the Carabao Cup. As we've made it to match day, Aston Villa just beaten Man United 4-2, have put, put themselves in second place in the Premier League. I mean, we're playing alright. Aston Villa, they are just being ridiculous for now. So the team for this game will be will remain largely unchanged for the normal uh, from the normal eleven. Just two substitutions. Um, Arsenal coming in for uh, Romeo because Romeo has been playing like shit, and uh, Kurzawa on the left back uh, position replacing Ryan Bertrand because he was nagging for the show play playtime. I didn't actually tell them I'd give it because I'm still not going to use him as my first team uh, left back. But Bertrand was also on a bit of a low. Uh, overall condition, so I thought it couldn't hurt to give Kurzawa a chance and uh, prove me wrong. As we are hosting West Ham 18th place, uh, West Ham United in the Premier League, so uh, this should be a must must win game. Still, they have a pretty good team with Ogbonna and Fabianski in goal. Uh, Zapleta has some experience. Philip Anderson, really good player, as is Jarmalenko, and uh, I think Haller is also quite pacey. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough battle, but hopefully we can uh, get away with the three points. As we're off to the races in the Premier League game of this episode, the 11th of the season already uh, nearing January, and hopefully uh, we'll get some money in January, because I do want to get a new Carrilero, as uh, Armstrong isn't really suitable for that position, and Romeo, Romeo isn't either, and he's also just been playing really poorly. So... Um, it's definitely something I want to improve. For the rest, I'm actually quite happy how the team is, uh, is playing so far. As we get a highlight, Danso intercepting, finding Valeri into Huybert, back to Danso. Gives it to the midfield with Armstrong, who plays it out wide to Valeri, who's gonna be looking for a cross. Eventually finds Ward Prowse, whips it in all the way to Kurzawa, who heads it over. And it's a good first chance of the game, which again, we've been the better team in. They're just looking for a goal. Half time still nil nil. More possession though, uh, a lot more chances also, uh, but still didn't manage to find the breakthrough. Um, this is a game I might actually change it to attack. Uh, I'm gonna continue on positive because we have been a better team, but uh, if we continue to play like this, I will get a bit more attacking. As we're into another highlight with a yeah, West Ham United throw in from Valbuena who gets it back into Fornals. We have to put on some pressure, try and recapture the ball and counter them. See this Creswell, we have to be very careful now. Danso doesn't make the tackle. Still there as Armstrong might actually oh, just about didn't get the ball. As it's now with Zabaleta who's gonna be looking for that cross. Whips it in, but actually outside of the 16, back to Creswell. This is gonna be one of those long drawn out highlights which usually uh, results in a very stupid goal. It's back to Zapaleta, and now it's actually a very poor pass. Bradman was there, picks it up, has uh, Danny Ings with him, finds Ings, hits it, and 1-0 to Southampton. Danny Ings scores a second of the season, and that's a fantastic goal. Uh, reclaiming possession with his hell striker, who makes the run. Ings play, playing up the back of his defender. And uh, eventually scores with a fantastic finish. First time finish. Keeper was completely wrong footed. And Southampton take the lead. 
All right, we're at the one hour mark. We're gonna make some substitutions. Kuzawa taking up a bit of a knock, so Walter Peter is coming on. As I think I'm gonna leave the others as is. Ward Pro is actually not playing the best game of his career. Maybe I'm gonna give Romeo a chance. Um, as that box to box midfielder. Maybe I'm actually gonna switch these around and play Armstrong as a Mazala on support. He seems to be quite natural to that role. Um, and maybe he'll be a bit more present around this area of space, helping out both Romeo and Redmond, not having to track back all the way to the box. Uh, might be better for him. As it seems like that one goal will be all we're getting this game or not. It's not a highlight for West Ham, but Walker Peter reclaims the ball, finds Hoiberg, and now we'll be looking to play that out of the fence again. Oh, nearly, nearly an old goal. Like, I've seen those quite a few times in FM. They never go in as goals, but uh, this was a damn close one. This was a damn close one. I would have been so pissed if that one gone in. Because we've been really the better team. A lot of chances, a lot of shots on target. Even more possession, but um, again, not really the goals, but we do win it 1-0. Simon Hooper having a fantastic game as the referee, so big ups to him. And um, yeah, my assistant manager doesn't really, he's already fucked up, fucked off home. So it's left it to me to uh, congratulate the boys on a good game. At the end of the day, if you win it 1-0 or 5-0, we have the three points. We're back up to seventh in the Premier League, two points off those... Uh, defin uh, definite uh, European places, depending on the Cups, you might still uh, get it with 7th, I think. Even it's Europa Cup too, but uh, the season is still very long and we might still fall all the way back uh, to a relegation battle. As for next episode, um, the United and Chelsea games are a bit too close for another video, so I will be showing you the Norwich game as a, it's, a, it's another Carabao Cup game in the quarterfinal, we might be able to progress to the semi-final. And I think that uh, if we could win a bit of silverware this season, uh, the Carabao Cup is going to be our best uh, choice there. Followed up by the Arsenal game in the Premier League. So two home games, one we should win, one that's going to be another difficult one, but we have um, done some incredible things against top six teams before. But that will be that for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching and see you on the next one.